What's up you guys? Today we're showing you how I made this medium concealment flag. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is get my plywood cut. Uh, so I got a two foot by two foot piece of three quarter inch plywood, and then I got a two foot by two foot piece of half inch, and I'm gonna cut my three quarter inch piece at 23 and seven eighths by 13, and I'm gonna cut my half inch piece at 24 by 13 and a quarter. All right, so now that I got those cut, the next thing that I'm gonna do is uh, take this one by five, eight foot one by five here, and I'm gonna cut a piece for the top and the bottom, and these are just gonna go flush with these outsides. And then once I got those cut, I'm gonna cut two side pieces that are gonna go flush uh, with the outsides of the top and bottom pieces um, with them on. So once I got my top and my bottom pieces on like this, then I'm going to cut my side pieces to go flush with the outsides of those boards. All right, so now that I got all these pieces cut, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this eight foot one by two here, and I'm gonna cut two pieces at 23 and seven eighths, and then rip those ones at an inch and three eighths, and then I'm gonna cut two more at 23 and seven eighths, and I'll just leave those at an inch and a half. All right, so now that I got those pieces cut, the next thing that I'm gonna do is take my left um, side piece right here, and I'm just gonna rip off an eighth inch. Um, on the back side of it. All right, so now that I got this piece ripped down, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this left piece off to the side and I'm gonna get the rest of this put together. Uh, so I'm just gonna glue uh, the seams where these come together and then I'll also glue the seams over here where these two come together. And then I'll just go ahead and pin nail all of these. Um, I'll go through the sides here into there and then I'll also I'll go through the sides of these and to the side of this back piece and then I just want to make sure that this back piece uh, lines up real good. Um, just make sure that it's not like bowing up anywhere and you don't need to push it down anywhere before you nail it. Uh, and to nail them I just have an 18 gauge brad nailer and I'll be using inch and a quarter nails. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that glued and nailed together real quick. All right, so now that I got this part nailed together, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, inch and three eighths pieces and I'm just going to push them up against the back in the corner um, and they shouldn't go out um, past this piece right here. And then I'm just gonna nail those on the top and the bottom and they're gonna go flat just like that. And then once I got those, I also glue them. So glue them and nail them. And then once I got those glued and nailed, next I'm gonna take my inch and a half pieces and I'm gonna put those ones just like this so that the wide part is facing out. And I'm gonna put those on the top and on the bottom as well, uh, just like that. And then these pieces are going to be um, for these drawer slides. So they go in there just like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get those boards nailed. All right, so now that I got those pieces put in there, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is, um, so like I said, this piece is going to go on the bottom just like this, and then it will uh, slide out like that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is take my leftover um, three quarter inch plywood, and I'm gonna rip some strips of it at two and a half inches um, so that they will fit inside here because we got uh, pretty much just barely over two and a half inches. Um, because our face is going to sit just like this. And then for one of those pieces, it's just gonna go right above this, um, just so that we kind of cover up all of this kind of open um, space in here. And then we're also going to cut some um, to fit. I'm gonna put uh, two more going up, and that's gonna divide my foam area 
um, from this other area over here. So I'm going to have two that are going to go up and down and then I'm going to put just like a little shelf in here or maybe two shelves depending on um, how much space there is. Uh, so I'm just going to rip some of that plywood at two and a half and then I'll go ahead and get that kind of put together. Uh, I actually think I'm going to use my half inch plywood for that instead um, just so that we have a little bit more space inside there. Um, so I'm going to use the half inch and not the three quarter inch. All right, so I went ahead and cut down three of those. So the first one I'm going to put, I went ahead and cut just a little bit off this edge just to make sure that it does not stick past um, this whole face at all. Um, in this one, I'm just going to set my rail in here and then I'm just going to nail it through the side and then mostly through the back. And I'm just going to hold it above this piece, um, probably like an eighth inch. And as you can see, it's all nice and bowed, so I'll have to... Um, just start over here and then nail it and then kind of bend it down as I go. I'll also lay a bead of glue um, on each of the edges uh, just to give it a little bit more support. And then once I got that piece nailed in there, I'm going to measure off of this side. Uh, I'm going to measure over 16 inches because that's how wide my piece of foam is. And then um, I'll put a piece going up and down right there. Um, so I'll have to measure that. Once I have this piece put in, I'll have to measure that and then cut it to fit. Um, I'll just have it so that it fits under this and then right on top of this and then my other piece um, I'm gonna measure two inches from this edge and make a mark and then that is where the um, Then it's gonna go on the outside of that line So the two inch mark will be on this side of it um, And then I think I'll just put either one or two shelves in there I'll just cut those to fit uh, and then I'll just nail those through the sides uh, So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all put together and we'll see how it looks All right, so I got all those put in there. So we're gonna have a slider down here and that should fit in there nicely. And then um, also for the shelf, um, I forgot, but we also have to leave a little bit of space on top too. I originally had this all the way to the top. Um, so I went ahead and put some spacers in there and cut these down a little bit um, so that we have room for a slider up here. Um, and then these pieces, I put these bottom and top pieces in there just so that it's easier to just nail it into um, this piece and then nail the side pieces into those rather than having to try and nail them through the back. Uh, I think that made it quite a bit easier. Um, so yeah, just remember I just cut down two small pieces, um, just two little chunks and put them in there uh, for a spacer and those work just fine. Uh, so the next thing that I'm gonna do, now that we pretty much got this thing all put together, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of paint on this. I think I'm just gonna paint this whole thing uh, black. Uh, I'll just be using this uh, Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Ultra Cover spray paint. Uh, I think I'll do a quick sand um, around the edges and then around maybe this face too, uh, just since that'll mostly be what is visible on this. And then if there's any rough spots that you want to sand inside, uh, you could do that also, but I'm not too worried about inside. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, do a quick sand on the outside, and then I'll get a coat of paint on this, and then we can start on the flag. All right, so now we can go ahead and start on the flag part. So I just have my three quarter inch cut out, uh, the little bit smaller one. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is just sand over this face just to give it a nice smooth finish. All right, so now that we got it all sanded, the next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and torch it. Uh, so I just got a propane torch here. Uh, the look I usually go for is just to burn it a little bit darker around the edges um, and then just do a little bit of a lighter burn in the middle, but uh, you can torch these however you'd like to. Uh, it's something you can kind of get creative with.
All right, so I think I'm gonna go with something like that. All right, so now that we got this thing all torched, the next thing that we're gonna do is start staining it. So unfortunately, uh, they do not have one inch frog tape. They got 0.94 inches, which is a little bit too small. Um, so I'm gonna be using the 1.41 inch frog tape. And the way that I'm gonna do this is first, I'm gonna do the red stripes. Um, so I'm just gonna measure uh, seven inches down and then I'll make a mark on both sides and then I'll just draw a really light line on there. And then that will be the line that will go uh, right under the union and then there will be a red stripe right here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, so I'll have a piece like that that's going all the way across and then I'm just gonna measure an inch down on each side and then I'll just line it up with a, a level or another straight edge and then I'll just cut off that excess so I have a one inch strip. Um, and then I'll do that for all my white stripes first um, so that I can stain my red stripes. Uh, and then for each one, I'll just measure an inch on each side uh, and then put another piece of tape and then cut it and then so on and so forth. And then up here for the union, um, I'm just going to put a piece, I'll just line up this side of the union and then I'll just make a mark and then I'll just put a piece of tape right there just to keep uh, the union nice and clean. And then once I got those stained, uh, so once I got the red ones stained, I'm actually gonna spray on uh, some of this sealer and then what, that, what that's gonna do is allow the tape to stick better to the stain. Um, and then that'll help it get a little bit cleaner lines. Uh, so I'll just spray a nice coat of this on there and then I'll pull the tape. And then after I let that dry up, then I can go ahead and tape off onto it. And for my red stain, uh, I just got this scarlet red. Uh, this stuff is from Lowe's. Um, they should have it at Home Depot. I've had a couple people comment and say that they haven't been able uh, to find the water base stained at Lowe's or Home Depot. So um, I don't know if, if they've stopped selling it or not, uh, but hopefully you can get it at your local Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, the blue, this is navy blue. Uh, this one's from Home Depot. If you get it from Lowe's, it will be true blue. And then the white is just white. And then these are all just water-based wood stains that are tintable. Um, the Minwax is Lowe's brand. The Varthane is Home Depot's brand. And then this stencil right here, I can go ahead and link this in the description if you'd like to order one of these. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my red stripes uh, taped off, stained and sealed, and we'll see how they look. All right, so I just got that sprayed on there. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this off and we'll see how our lines turned out. All right, looks like they turned out pretty clean. Uh, and I went ahead and I did three coats of this red stain on there, uh, just to give you an idea of how dark it comes out. But if you don't want it quite as dark, obviously you can do um, just one or two coats, or if you want it darker, you could do more. And if you just want your white stripes to be wood color, then that will pretty much be it for the stripes. And then you just go straight to the union. Um, I kind of like the white look, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stain those white. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to give these some time to dry just so that uh, this sealer can dry up and then I can tape to it. 
And then I'll go ahead and do the white stripes the same way, except I'll just tape off these red stripes. All right, just got done spraying the white. Let's go ahead and see how this one turned out. I probably gave it about an hour for the other stain to dry just to make sure that, or for the other sealer to dry, uh, just to make sure that it was dry all the way and it doesn't peel up. Um, and it looks like we are good. We're not peeling up any of the other stain or sealer. Looks like we got a nice clean line for our union. And it looks like our stripes are looking nice and clean. And as you can see, I just got, um, I just went ahead and cut my tape in half. And then that way you don't have to line it up on the board and try cut it. I just, I just stuck it to uh, this little piece of wood up here. And then um, just holding it with one hand, I pretty much just ran my razor blade down it and then just kind of cut it in half as best I could. And then that way all you have to do is just line up the one side, tape it, and then just tape the other side and then it just has a little bit of overlap in there. And then that way you're not trying to run a razor and then you're not trying to like see through the tape and try and line it up with the red. All right, so now that I got those all stained, um, I'm just gonna let this white dry. And then last, I will go ahead and stain the union. Um, so for the union, all I'm gonna have to do is just tape off the two sides. And then um, for the white, I did four coats of that. Uh, that's kind of a lot, but that's the shade that I like it. Um, and for the blue, I think usually I do around three coats. So I'm just gonna let that dry and go ahead and stain the blue. All right, so I got that stained. Uh, I have not sealed it yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the stars real quick. Uh, for this one, I'm just gonna be spray painting the stars. Uh, someone gave me a tip on how to spray paint them and I just wanted to try it out. Um, so I'm gonna be trying this, this repositioning adhesive. Um, so it's supposed to work with stencils and you're just supposed to spray it on the back and then it's supposed to help um, stick it and then to make sure that nothing bleeds through uh, so I just wanted to give it a try and see how it works so I did do a test on it and it looked like it worked pretty good but the way that this works is you're just going to uh, shake this up very well and then we're gonna dust a coat onto the back side of the stencil and then we're gonna give it like a minute to dry and then uh, you're just gonna want to stick it I think the best way to do it would just be to try and stick it in this bottom right corner and have it line up real nice. And then once you stick it, it should stay in place. And then I'm just gonna go through and push it all down. And then after that, I'm gonna take some white spray paint and then I'm just gonna try and uh, do a couple light coats on there to spray paint those on there. And then we'll pull it off and we'll see how it looks. Uh, I just got this stuff from Hobby Lobby, but I think they have it on Amazon and I can link it in the description. All right, so I went ahead and dusted a couple coats on there. I'm thinking it might be a better idea 
to seal it first and then to spray the stars and then maybe the adhesive will stick a little bit better to the sealer than it will to the um, wood. Um, so maybe I'll try that next time. That might give it a little bit cleaner lines just because it will stick better. Uh, but let's just see how this worked um, just on the wood. All right, um, I think that turned out really nicely. Uh, there's a couple of spots where it looks like a little bit hazy, uh, but for the most part, I think that turned out really nicely. And then we don't have to worry about sealing the union just because uh, we shouldn't have to tape to it now. Um, I'm just gonna pull all the tape and then uh, once this paint dries, then I'll just seal the whole thing all as one just to give it uh, a nice solid coat over the whole thing. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna give those stars some time to dry. Uh, make sure that when you're done using your easy tack that you uh, do what it says for after use and uh, clear out the valve. It says that you just hold it upside down and spray it until there's only gas coming out and then that way it won't get clogged up on you. All right, so I went ahead and gave those some time to dry. And then like I said, I'm just gonna spray another coat over the whole face of this. Um, and then once that dries, I'm actually gonna spray the sides and the back um i'm just gonna throw some black on there uh you probably won't see much of the back or the sides but just in case you do see any of it then that way it'll just be consistent with the rest of the cabinet um so i'm gonna go ahead and get that sprayed out All right, so we got that all sealed and painted. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is get this flipped over and we're going to go ahead and put on the cabinet slider hardware. Uh, so I just got these two sliders here. These are 22 inch. I got these from Home Depot. They're full extension, um, ball bearing slide set, soft close. And these ones, they have that, the soft close is where they, at the very end of the slide, they kinda, um, they have like a spring mechanism so that when they get to the end, into that last section, they kind of just pull themselves shut like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna screw these on. I'm just gonna line it up just flush. If anything, I'll just hang it just a little bit past and then I'm gonna bring it um, like an eighth inch off uh, this end right here. Maybe I'll do like a quarter inch off this end and then that way we can have it a little bit closer in here and then further away over here. And then that way the sliders will pull it tight and then help to keep it shut in a way. So I'm going to go ahead and get these screwed on here. Uh, make sure that whatever screws you use, they're not too long. So I'll probably use uh, either three quarter inch or half inch screws. Uh, just hold it next to it first before you screw it in just to make sure that it will fit. And then I'll do a quarter inch off this edge. All right, so I forgot to mention this in the video, but um, in order to get to the last screw hole, uh, there's that little lever there that I circled, that little black thing, and you'll just either slide that um, to one side or the other, and then if you just pull on the slider, then it will release, and then you can uh, open it all the way and then get to that last screw hole. All right, so I went ahead and got these put on there. Um, one thing I had to do, uh, as you can see, my plywood is a little bit warped and with it being like that, these sliders weren't exactly working as they should, um, because this edge was a little bit higher and then this, uh, piece right here was catching when it would slide in and it was also rubbing on the inside as well. Um, so I got these washers here. Uh, these are just a uh, quarter inch flat washers. Uh, from Home Depot, and then I got some longer screws. Um, these are your number eight three quarter inch screws. And then I got two on each side, and then I got three in the middle. Um, and with it being like that, then these slide nicely as they should, and they're not catching. Uh, so I did that on both sides. Uh, now that we got these put on here, uh, now we can go ahead and get this screwed on to our box. I kind of tested mine in there just to make sure that it's gonna fit. So we'll go ahead and, and this is just gonna set in there just like that. 
And then I'm just gonna butt these uh, up all the way up to the end. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and screw these in. Um, you can just screw in maybe just one screw on each one first and then you can kind of just test it and make sure that everything looks good. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get those screwed in real quick. All right, so I went ahead, I got those sliders screwed in there. So now it slides open nicely and it should have that, right at the end it should have the um, that soft close. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left trim piece and I'm just gonna hold it. I'll probably have to shim this side out a little bit um, so that this gap right here will tighten up. And then what I'm gonna do is just line it up on the top and the bottom and make sure that it's lined up with the other trim. And then I'm just gonna tack a couple nails into it. And then once I got it tacked on there, then I'm gonna just open it up and then I'm gonna flip it over so that I can access the, the back side of it. And then I got um, a couple of these inch and a half uh, corner braces. Um, and maybe I'll just put like three of them on there. And then um, hopefully that will help to make this nice and strong. And then after that, once we shut it, then this will act as a stopper for the flag. And then this is also gonna act as our little push piece that we can use to open the flag. Um, since we'll have this edge right here, we can use this to pull it open. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece put on there. All right, so I had to make a few uh, minor adjustments to it. Um, when it was shutting, I had a little bit of a gap on the top uh, and on the bottom, and it's because uh, since this piece is a little bit bowed, my corner braces, since they're at a 90 degree angle, they were angling back a little bit. So I just pulled them off real quick, and then I used my channel locks here to just give them a little bit of a bend. Uh, and then I also just tweaked it a little bit, just pulling on this piece, and now I got them to close up pretty tight. And then also after I did that, there was still a little bit of a gap up here. So I just went ahead and I loosened uh, the screws on this top slider up here. And then that allowed it to have a little bit of room um, to move. And then it kind of self adjusted um, to be tight. And then I just opened it and then just re-screwed it. Um, there's plenty of different holes up here to screw to, so I just picked two screw holes that I hadn't used yet. And then uh, now we got it to close up uh, nice and tight. And then the back of it should have a little bit of space. And then that's so when it's hanging on the wall, um, this isn't just dragging, uh, but we can't take off too much um, just so that it's not noticeable. Uh, but now that we got this put together, the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is uh, I went ahead and ordered this piece of foam off Amazon. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, link it in the description. It is two and a half inches thick, and I believe it's a 16 by 12. So I was thinking that I would just cut it to fit. Um, it should already fit lengthwise but I'll have to cut the height down to fit below that slider right there. And then uh, I also have, I just got some glue here and I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it in there. And this stuff is pretty dense, so, so I'm hoping it will cut out really nicely. Uh, so first I'm just gonna get this cut down and put in there. And to cut it, I just have one of these uh, extendable knives. This one's a pretty cheap one, so hopefully it will work fine. But that's what I'll be using to cut it. All right, so I got this cut to fit. I don't even know if we're gonna need glue in here. I cut it like an eighth inch big and it's actually in there pretty solid. Um, it went behind this uh, rail right here and it's actually in there pretty solid. Um, but one thing I'm gonna do before we put it in there, uh, I'm gonna quickly just lightly dust over uh, these two slider ends with my spray paint. I'm gonna pull this out first. And then yeah, I'll just dust those uh, just because you do see just a little bit, you know, if the light's hitting it right. And then we're gonna have to get this screwed onto the wall before we put this in uh, because you are gonna have to screw it to the studs. This one is, um, it's actually pretty heavy. So 
Um, you're definitely gonna, gonna wanna screw it to the studs. And I think I'm just gonna put uh, one in each of these. And then I'll probably do two more over here. So I'm gonna just pull this out. I'm gonna quickly dust that. And then I'm gonna go find a spot to screw this. And then maybe I will get everything laid out on here and then I'll cut it and then I'll put it back in and we'll see how it looks. All right, I got those sliders touched up and I'm sorry, I missed one thing that I was also gonna do. And uh, this is for just a super simple lock that I thought would work for a project like this. Um, just in case anybody has this around the house and uh, if they have kids and they don't want kids getting into this thing, uh, I think this is just a really simple way to uh, prevent that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I just have this uh, 3 16 inch plain steel um, rod. It's just a 12 inch piece. And then I also have the ceramic block magnets. And what I'm gonna do is just take a, uh, so this thing is 3 16 so I'm just gonna take my 7 30 seconds bit and I'm just gonna drill, I guess it could be on either side, on the right or on the left. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just drill a hole through the top and then I'm gonna go uh, maybe just like a half inch or so into, into my face frame. And then once I do that, then I'm just gonna take my rod here and then I'm just gonna drop it in there and then I'm just gonna mark it so that it would be flush with the top. And then I'll just cut it and then I'm just going to, maybe I'll just dust some black paint on it um, especially on the top and then depending at what height you have this at um, you might not even be able to see the top of this um, so then you wouldn't even really notice it anyways uh, but either way I think this will be a good way to let you just have a simple lock on it because then you can just drop that piece in there it will be flush with the top so it won't be sticking out and then you'll just use one of these magnets and then you just kind of set it right over the top of it and then just pull it out uh, and then that will allow you to open this. Uh, so it's just sup super simple and basic. And I just thought it might help for anybody who does want a simple lock on here. So I'm also going to do that as well. All right, so I got my foam cut out. Um, I just kinda set them on there and then outlined them with my razor and then um, went ahead and dug those out as deep as they need to be. I went ahead and threw this flashlight in there just for kicks. Uh, one thing I would do a little bit differently um, with the gun and the mags is uh, just a little bit tighter um, because it does tip just a little bit when I have it standing straight up um, if, you, if I like wiggle it. Um, so I might just do it a little bit tighter just so that it's a little bit more snug in there and I don't have to worry about it falling out. Um, I think it'll be fine, but I might just do it a little bit more snug than I did it. And then I also went ahead and got this put on the wall. Um, like I said, I just got my two screws on either side uh, just to hold it in there. And it's nice and sturdy. Uh, another thing I might do 
different is that my wall texture is a little bit bumpy. Um, so I might actually take about a quarter inch off this piece rather than an eighth inch. Um, Cause I did shim it just a little bit off the wall um, just to give it enough room so that it doesn't rub on the wall at all. So I think it still looks just fine. I don't think you'd really notice anything unless you were really looking at it. Um, and then also just wanted to show you, I got my little piece of steel here and I got my little hole up here and that just sets right in there. You don't really notice it from the front and it locks it in there real nice. Can't push it open. And if you just take your magnet and it should just pull it right out of there and then you can open it nicely. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my foam put in here. And this should just slide in there nice and easy. It should kind of squish in there actually because it's, you're gonna try and just hold it in there just like that and I think it'll actually stay quite well. Um, if you do think it's too loose in there, just go ahead and throw some glue on the back of it. Um, the only problem with that is that you're gonna have to pull it off um, if you ever want to take it off the wall or move it. So uh, if you just cut it a little big, then it should stay in there. And that goes in there just like that. And I think that turned out pretty clean and I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the build. If you guys got any questions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Also, you can check me out on Instagram. I'll go ahead and link everything that I used in the description if you'd like to order it. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck with your project.